Gatsby fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. Hope you all are having a gorgeous meat fuel day so far. As always, please update me down below in the comment section on how you guys are doing on your carnivore journeys. I would love to know. Today's video will feature a beautiful and brilliant bombshell of a guest. Her name is Rina. Rina is a fabulous 40 year old carnivore. And by the way, she does not look 40 at all. You guys will see very soon. And she is the founder and creator of the five minute body. Rina helps you cultivate the most effective science-based wellness hacks in the form of daily micro habits. And of course, one of them is the carnivore diet. So she will be elaborating much more in detail about what you guys can do starting today to effectively and easily start losing that stubborn fat, start optimizing your health and maximizing your mental and physical performance. Rina will also share her absolute best tips to start the carnivore diet and succeed. And finally, as always, if you guys are new here or new to the carnivore diet and looking for a 24 seven support group where you will get inspiration, connection, and access to live Zoom calls every single week with me and my team of carnivore coaches, feel free to join my Steak and Butter Gang support group and 30 day carnivore challenges. You guys can go to sbgmeetup.com as always, or check out the links down below. So without further ado, let me invite on my special guest, Rena. Hi, Rena. Welcome. Hey, Bella. Hi. Thank you for having me. You are looking gorgeous as always. Rena had me on her channel and I just fell in love with her bubbly personality, her passion for good health. Before we delve into all of the topics I would love to discuss with you, how did you even come across the carnivore diet? So the carnivore diet, I came across it um, quite in an interesting way. So anybody that asks me about my journey, I will say I have done the wrong thing most of my life. And I just dive into something. And then, then I understand that you're quite the same. I dive into something. I have no idea what, what I'm doing. And then I find my way. So a bit about me in, in terms of my background is that I do have quite an addictive uh, personality. So I used to have quite bad sugar addiction. Um, like this is like back 20 years ago. So through my journey, um, I started off, like, as I said, the wrong way, which was exercising, um, you know, every day running on the treadmill for an hour, but I was also eating like five, six times a day and eating like high carb foods, low fat foods. So then fast forward 10 years when I was 30, I found um, a variation of the keto diet. I didn't know that it was keto, but I came across a guy called Vinnie Tortorich. I don't know if you know him. Yes. He's off the NSNG lifestyle. When he was talking about intermittent fasting, I was like, what? Don't have breakfast? This is 10 years ago. So intermittent fasting is so common now. And right. everybody right. knows a lot about fasting. It's so popular. And there's so many amazing benefits. But 10 years ago, I just thought, oh, my goodness, not having breakfast. Like I have my oats first thing in the morning, although I'm not hungry. So I started off doing that. So I was still having, you know, a, a generally a healthy diet. So I was having oats, whole grain breads and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So then I started with, with the intermittent fasting. And that was quite interesting because I thought, oh, by nine or 10 o'clock, I'm not hungry. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, oh, I'm not hungry. This is quite easy. And then Vinny was talking about how he would have some heavy cream in the morning with his coffee. And his first meal of the day is just having eggs, steak, um, butter and meat, right? Yeah. So, uh, but then he also had vegetables and salads and that kind of thing. So then I slowly transitioned to what we now know as a keto diet. Through that um, time frame of from being 30 up until now, so I'm almost 40, um, I have slowly transitioned from doing keto to ketoval. Um, and the main reason around that is because I feel that I'm just what well, I know that I'm quite allergic to a lot of things. So even with vegetables, I would bloat. I would heavily bloat. Like I look like I'm, I'm literally pregnant when I would have vegetables, even raw or even, even cooked. So this idea about having vegetables, I thought was very healthy. I, I thought the idea of having fiber is very, very healthy until, so then I was keto so then I, I kind of took away all the vegetables. I was only having leafy greens. Um, I was having avocado, I was having nuts. And like I said before, I have um, an addictive personality. So when it comes to nuts, I don't have just a little portion of nuts. I have loads of nuts. So I don't, so loads of nuts. Um, then now six months ago, I came across Dr. Ken Berry. Mm. Love him. And I know that he's been on, on, on your channel as well. And just the idea of having just red meat primarily, butter 
and steak and no vegetables, I thought, you know what, I want to try this. And even before when I was even keto, as I said to you previously, I wasn't having a lot of red meat. I was having a lots of salmon, lots of seafood, and I was having chicken. Um, I didn't think anything was wrong with red meat. I just thought I don't really have a taste for it. Mm. So about six months ago, that's when I started carnivore. And um, it's amazing. I don't have any bloating. I have a flat tummy. Um, and I generally do have a flatter tummy generally. But when when you have that um, uncomfortable feeling in your stomach from eating something that's not quite right. So even like, for example, dairy, I can't have dairy, but I do feel best when I eat beef, eggs and butter. So that's a long-winded answer to your question. So a lot of people who come to carnivore, they obviously see so many of the top carnivores in general. They're like, red meat is the king, ribeyes for life. You know, like everybody loves beef. So yeah. how did you get yourself to slowly want to eat more red meat, more beef, and, you know, end up eating solely beef? Was that just a natural progression? For me, it, yeah, the, the taste, it wasn't too bad because beef tastes nice. It's a bit more mild. But when it comes to lamb, it's a bit of that stronger taste. Yeah. And I think it's just knowing how to cook it. So for me, I love to do a lamb roast. I love anything in the air fryer because it gets really crispy. I'm not the best cook. So I was doing a what I eat in a day and I was just thinking, oh, my recipes are not that fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but any time that you can get a fatty cut of meat and make it crispy, it just makes that taste a bit nicer. If you cook meat the wrong way, and I think I was cooking meat the wrong way, I think that's why I didn't like it. Um, and especially with uh, beef, having it a little bit medium rare mm -hmm. is good. Choosing the right steaks is really important. So to answer your question, having the fattier meats, cooking it nicely so that you know that the taste that you like helped me to be able to eat meat. So even the easiest thing I do is just ground beef. Mm, beef bits, the best. Um, meatballs, rissoles, burgers, yeah. um, and I put butter on top. Yeah, perfect. Delicious. Just share a little bit more about yourself, Rena. How old are you and where do you live? Okay, so um, I'm 40 next year um, and I live in Sydney, Australia. Okay. So um, it's, it's wonderful. So it's nice to live here. I did visit Turkey quite recently and I just fell in love with Turkey. Uh, I fell in love with the Middle East, the culture. My background is Indian, um, although I was born here. Let me just give you guys some backstory. When I first met Rena on Zoom, when she invited me on to be interviewed, I legit thought she was no older than 28, 29, definitely not older than 30. So I just have to know, did you see any benefits, changes in your skin, in your hair? Well, I did say to you when I hopped onto our other Zoom course, I said, I think my face is a bit shiny <laughs> in a good way. I guess it would come down to my emotional and my physical health. That's the biggest changes because I was eating like lots of salmon, lots of fish. I was eating some vegetables, like not too much. And I was having a lot of fat. So that's kind of a precursor towards healthy hair, healthy nails and healthy skin. So as I said, the main thing with carnivore is my internal, just feeling happier. I just, and the other thing was, so even now I feel a lot more calmer, but I used to stutter a lot. When I would feel nervous, I would stutter a bit. So that has changed. Like I'm just like a lot more even tempered, a lot more calmer um, anxiety wise as well. Like when it comes to social anxiety, I just feel more relaxed when I was doing keto or, or even keto. When you just have so many nuts or even let's just say things that are not like fatty meats. So I think that when it comes to anxiety levels, focus and concentration, that's really what eating fatty meats. It's what you're evolutionary meant to be eating in terms of what's going to keep you satiated, regulate your hormones, help with your sleep help with your stress. So as an addictive type of personality where you tend to go towards the extreme, similar to mine too, you mentioned you had a big love for nuts. You ate a lot of nuts. And when you did, when you were keto for keto, you tend to go overboard. Did you have cravings for nuts and nut butters when you first started carnivore? It's funny, like when you said nut butter, my eyes just open because I, I would eat half a jar of almond butter and peanut butter, which is not normal. And I'm sure that other people feel the same way, but honestly, I feel so abnormal because even my, my partner, he would just have a tablespoon of almond or peanut butter or almond butter or any kind of butter. Oh, I'm full. I'm like what? I would slather that onto walnuts and eat the thing. 
Wow. So when I moved to Carnival, no, I didn't. And I was just surprised. It's it's kind of like that, that moment when I started intermittent fasting mm-hmm. and I was like, wow, I haven't had breakfast and I'm not hungry. Mm-hmm. The same thing when I uh, went to Carnival, I was like, oh, my God, I feel satisfied. And I don't really feel like eating more. Okay. So I asked that question because that's mostly the last vice for a lot of people. That That's like their weak spot when a lot of you know keto people come into the carnivore space and they cut out all of those plant foods uh the last thing that they still crave that is not carnivore is nut butters for some reason if you could kind of sum it up why do you think that is i think it's the fat component and that mouth satiation component um and one thing i forgot to mention was that even when i eat um let's just say meat or something i do have a little bit of butter i just like slice some butter put in my my mouth yeah (laughs) Yeah, totally. so I think that is similar to having the almond butter effect, mm-hmm. um, which is it's just fat. It's that feeling of yumminess or even it's that signal in your brain around desserts. It's it feels like a dessert nuts. It's still like if, even if you're keto or even carnivore, if you have nuts, you can sense that sweetness, especially almonds, cashews, things that are higher in carbs. So what I teach my clients also is the cephalic effect of foods. So even when you have things like stevia, if you have things like artificial sweeteners, although there's no calories or energy in the food, your brain can interpret that as a sweet signal or a trigger signal. So you have to be careful. And and different people, they have different triggers. So nuts, it can be a dessert trigger and even understanding that understanding that to say you know what i'm getting triggered this is something i'm doing after a meal but i'm full why am i having these nuts kind of that habit changing there's one thing to be physically full a lot of the hunger is mind hunger right exactly in your brain and you have to and and even after i eat a meal i do wait until i want something more i say you know what rena wait 10 minutes Mm-hmm. go clean up, go do something else, just wait 10 minutes because it does take time for your brain to understand, you know what, I've had enough food, especially if you've come from a background of eating disorders, addiction, yes. even anything where you have any limitation, any diets, because your brain is geared towards restriction. Mm-hmm. And with carnivore, you don't have restriction. You don't have portion control on carnival. Oh. You don't eat a palm size of meat on 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 carnival did you notice any appetite changes increase decrease I, not really i just allowed myself to eat okay. so then i just ate more as a byproduct of just saying you know what i'm just going to eat enough until it. i'm not limiting portions so even with i guess even with keto keto or this idea about portions and and how much should you be eating i know not to count calories 100 percent. i don't believe in counting calories yeah. but it's this idea of oh, i'm a girl I should be eating this much food, but no, I eat more than my, my partner and that's okay. Nice. That's fine. He doesn't want to eat much. That's fine. I eat a lot. So I'm guessing your boyfriend is completely supportive of you being carnivore now, right? Did you ever have to go through any hurdles of not being socially accepted when you're out with friends and they're kind of judging you or your family being concerned? Not my family being concerned uh, because I think they, they know that I'm strange. Um, and, and- <laughs> <laughs> they know that I'm strange. Like, you know, even when you say I don't eat carbs and even when you eat salads, it's like, you don't eat carbs. Oh, like even when it comes to brains, uh, uh, grains, uh, rice and cereals, yeah. what? So even for that is um, for even for, for them, it's a shock, but I've been like this for so long. That's not a big deal. And I'm always self experimenting and I'm always trying different things. And for some reason, I just like doing that. The only hard thing is that when you're in a social setting yeah. and you have lots of people eating different varied foods, but you need to ask for just the meat, or if there's no meat options, then you think, what What do I do? But the one thing that with this whole lifestyle is that it's not perfection. Um, I try to be imperfect, but make progress. And that's what I tell my clients. That's what I tell my family. So let's just say, for, like, for example, I told you last week I went to a Thai restaurant. Yeah. They had masiman beef curry. They had pork, seafood, but then they had things on top. I would just scrape it off. I can't, like, not eat. Yeah. Uh, it's a social setting. It's a work environment. So mm-hmm. I just take some beef, scrape off the sauce, 
and just eat what I can. So that's a part of just, you know, being um, making the progress, not being perfect, because it's the perfection that kills your results. It really is that strive for perfection because a lot of people, you know, they slip up even just a little bit and they're like, oh, all of my hard work was ruined. Now I have to go all the way back to base one. Totally not the case. You just go back to carnivore after that meal, the next day, keep going. Let's go into fitness. That is one of your big passions. Um, if you guys check out Rena's YouTube channel, you will see immediately she has some gorgeous, amazing workout videos. So how did you get into fitness in the first place? This started 20 years ago. So it started with, with my sister. I just joined a gym. I looked at the treadmill. I looked at all the exercise equipment. I had no idea about how to even use any of the resistance exercise equipment. So I just started on the treadmill. I couldn't even run at this time. Mm -hmm. So I literally uh, was running for like, you know, walking first, then running for like five minutes. And every day I'll just increase the increment until I got to an hour. And I was running on the treadmill for an hour every single day, which ended up not being the best thing because then I had um, an injury in, in my ITB. I also studied finance and economics as my degree. Wow. And then I really loved this health and fitness and this kind of industry. So I said to my Indian father, dad, I want to be a personal trainer. He said, what? Why do you want to be a trainer? You need to be in finance. You just started your first job, like in one of the biggest banks in Australia. I was like, wow. yeah, but dad, like, and this is when I was 21. Oh, but dad, like, I really don't like, um, you know, like I'm not passionate about it. I love my health. I, I love exercise and I really want to be a trainer. So I did my qualification as a personal trainer. I started my own business at one of the largest gyms in Australia I did well, but what I did notice about fitness training is that it's not the exercise, it's the psychology around being motivated. It's the psychology of exercise. That's the real benefits around it mm -hmm. versus fat loss. Because most people, when they exercise, they exercise to lose weight. Yes. But what I tell people even now and what I've learned through this whole time is that exercise is actually a really bad way to lose weight. Most people say that it's probably 15% exercise, 85% diet. Mm -hmm. I would actually dare to say it's probably 99% diet and 1% exercise. Yeah. And let me tell you why. Even from my experience, even when I was exercising every day for an hour on the treadmill, even doing resistance work, work I had an overcompensatory behavior. I would exercise and all of a sudden, I'd feel hungry. And I'd go eat so much food. And that was the carbs, the cereals, the breads, and, and that kind of thing. You think that's going to make you lose weight. Mm -hmm. But then you eat more. And then you think, why am I not losing weight? Or if you do lose weight, why do I have a bit of a like um, a belch here around my, my yeah. tummy? Yeah. Because it's the hormones, right? It's your right. cortisol levels. And when it comes to exercise, as I said, not doing exercise for weight loss, doing exercise for brain health mm -hmm. to actually make you feel happy and make you feel joyful mm -hmm. and to change your hormones. So hormonal regulation, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing with, with exercise. So it is a bit controversial. I guess some people might not agree with what I'm saying mm -hmm. um, in terms of exercise for weight loss, mm -hmm. um, but that's just definitely what I've seen in my 20 years of experience. Your YouTube channel is called The 5 Minute Body. Could you explain yeah. why you decided to choose that name, the five minute body? Basically, when it comes to the five minute body, it's about creating your best body, your best self, your wellness with just micro habits. So the micro habits is really about cultivating small little habits that you do every day. One of them is exercise. One of them is diet. Mm. One of them is mindset, sleep and stress. Yeah. How can you actually put this into your daily routine to achieve wellness? So the five minute body, I, I, I thought that it really encompassed the whole idea about what this program is about, because it's a, it's about a lifestyle. It's not about, let me just start a diet or something temporary to get to your goal within a month or two months. It's yeah. about how can I change my life in the most easiest way possible for the long term yeah. so that I can create change because people don't want to change. I don't want to change, <laughs> but I need to make things stupidly simple mm -hmm. so that I continue day to day to day. I like it already. When you say 
stupidly simple. I'm like, oh, I think I can do that. And I think that's why your whole program is so successful because people feel like they can actually do it and they can actually succeed. I get asked all the time from women, I don't know how to exercise because all I want to do is lose fat, get more toned, but I don't want to look too buff or muscular. So what is your advice for that question? So I do hear that a lot in terms of, I don't want to get too bulky. I don't want to put on muscle, but to understand the variation between men and women. So for women to actually put on a lot of muscle is really hard because of our hormonal um, makeup. So men have a lot of testosterone. They have a lot of anabolic hormones than women do. But in terms of what you want, I just make them feel comfortable in terms of when we're talking about muscle, to put on muscle, that's exactly what you want. Like that toneness, that looking fit, that looking strong and healthy, what that means is you're putting on that little bit of muscle and that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And when you actually want to lose weight, where the exercise comes in is actually doing strength training, body weight workout, circuit training to actually activate your muscle fibers so that they get stronger. What that means is that's going to help you in your everyday life. So for back pain, for your posture, yeah. to get up and have energy in your day, to yeah. pick up your, your, your kids, to carry grocery, you know, for like 10, 15 minutes, you're not going to be feeling this ouchiness and that pain. You're going to be feeling strong. But bear in mind, we're not looking like men. Yeah. We're not going to look like that. So, And then I also show pictures in terms of, okay, this is what a client of mine was like before. This is what, what she looks like after. And it's a small change. It's a small change. They just look a bit more tighter and um, toned. And also the other thing that I also find a common question, and I'm not too sure if you've um, heard this as well, that when it comes to putting on muscle or even a little bit in terms of changes in body composition, mm -hmm. you do see, you don't see a downward decline on the scale so much. So if you like um, weight loss and look at the scale for achievement in terms of weight loss, you might not necessarily get that when you're changing your body composition. Even with carnival, yeah. you might not necessarily get such a reduction in your scale weight because what we see with carnival is that you just generally put on a bit more lean muscle mass. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the different types of workouts and exercises, mm -hmm. I always hear weight training, and then there's the HIT, the interval workouts, and then there's the good old cardio, going outside, running, jogging. So which is best? The biggest success is what you're going to stick to. I don't care if it's hit, resistance training, if it's walking, anything that you can do and that's exercise is important. Now, this is what I see in terms of the industry as a whole. It's the minutia. So when I say minutia, I mean, it's focusing on oh, what's best. Should I do the weight training? Should I do the hit? And I understand because you want to know what's the best thing that I can do to get the max result in the shortest period of time. Yeah. But the main thing is, whatever you're going to stick to day in, day out, or even a few times a week. And it's the idea of movement. That's what's the most successful. So I can train my, my clients or anyone. I could say, okay, we're going to do a weight training program. We're going to do this and this and this. But if they're not into it, if they don't love it, they're not going to do it. Mm. So whatever you love and what you can stick to. I know for you, Bella, you like to walk your dog, right? Correct. Yes, yes. Perfect. Perfect. That's your exercise. And you are in fantastic shape. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that actually makes me feel so good because I often get asked, like, are you sure you don't do any workouts? Like, I mean, you really don't go to the gym. And it kind of makes me feel like, well, should I now? Because all I do really is just outside hikes, walks. You know, I run here and there if I'm chasing my dogs. And that really is what I love to do most. And it's what I've been doing for the past three years as a carnivore. So I think, you know, your advice is definitely something to take home. Whatever you guys enjoy most is the best exercise, best workout for you. Let's learn what you do, Rina. So take us through a typical day of your life when it comes to uh, nutrition, fitness, yes. and yes. any biohacks that you do, like your typical morning routine, I would just love to know. So starting off with my morning routine, I don't have my phone next to me. So I live in a split level apartment. I have my phone upstairs. So the first thing that I do when, when I wake up, it sounds weird, but I say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I practice gratitude. Our environment is geared towards negativity 
And even if you listen to the news, what's happening in the world, the pandemic, we are feeling negative. So you have to force that positivity into your life. The first thing that I do is just say, um, thank, thank you. So, and I've just developed that um, as a habit. It sounds strange, but I just say, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my life. So then I wake up, I go upstairs. I say hi to my little, little dog who's sleeping o- over there. And he's 14. So he's in his bed upstairs. So the first thing I do is kiss him. Then I have my black coffee. I sit on my egg chair, which is my gratitude chair, which is right here. Um And then I just have my coffee. I don't have any distraction around phone or or anything. Next to me, I have my five-minute gratitude journal. Sometimes I feel like writing a bit more. Sometimes I don't feel like writing. So I just put one word. I'm grateful for movement. I'm grateful for my coffee. But the idea is, is that even when you have no time or you have a little bit more time, is cultivating your brain to understand how what what are you grateful for today so after my gratitude then I take my dog out for a walk um, and then he has to kind of run around and do all his bits and pieces Um, so I have my first black coffee in the morning the night before I just write down things that I have to do for my work life for my business and for my personal self-care so every day I try to do a self-care even if it's something so basic like just having time to give myself an affirmation uh, yesterday I bought some flowers just $10 flowers they're nothing too expensive so there's some things that you can do for yourself which is just self-care now when it comes to meals um, when I first started intermittent fasting when I first started keto and ketoville I was having probably my first meal around 11 so when I started carnival I actually felt I didn't feel hungry, but it was in my mind that I had to eat something around about that 11 o'clock. Mm-hmm. But then I just experimented with pushing my meal, my first meal, a bit back. So around 12, around 1 o'clock. Now I probably don't eat till about 2 o'clock. So even in my mind, it's so routine and easy because I don't feel hungry. And I actually find I have a lot more energy and I feel sharper and calmer when I don't eat. Of course. Yeah, that's the that's the whole beauty of being in a fasted state. So do you typically do OMAD or TUMAD? I do TUMAD because I like food. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) I don't need that second meal, Bella. I don't need that second meal. But I like food. For me, doing that one meal a day, I do it sometimes, um, especially like when I'm busy. That's when I'll do a one meal a day. But ideally for me, I love two meals a day. And I usually do it over a four to six hour period. Well, Rena, thank you so much for everything that you shared. It has been such a pleasure getting a sneak peek into your carnivore way of eating and living. So where can people find more of you? Where are you on regarding social media platforms? Okay, so they can find me on YouTube under the five minute body i have an instagram page so i'm also writing a book uh where i'm yes amazing <laughs> I know. so i'm also writing a book so that's going to be a pre-release of excerpts from the book um and if you just want to support me in this program and this lifestyle then you can do that on patreon as well but thank you so much bella it's been i can just talk to you for hours you're amazing me too, me too. thank you rena it was such a pleasure sending love nice welcome Thank you, Bella.